Happy Independence Day to all of our American ears. And welcome to this Pirates Parlay, where we celebrate our holidays with games. Today we rejoin the British. Or fight for our freedom with the pirates. And do I really have to wear this? Fine. The game is British vs. Pirates by Apollo Randall. Stick around and we'll give you the grand tour. And seriously, I hate this thing. At least hold this. First of all, toss this. And head for the Board Game Geek page and download the upgraded rulebook from the Files section. You still may need a few clarifications, but that's what YouTube is for. Start with the Wind Sea tile, which has the Wind Vane Island space, and put it between the players. Then each player picks a starting tile to attach to it, on either side. Now, are you British or are you pirate? Pick a faction and take all the minis. Red for British and gray for pirates. Well, until you paint them, that is. Next, it's time to build your forces. You can't join the action without the ships and captains matching your faction. In most versions of the game, you'll each have one ship with one captain. But in a two-player game of standard annihilation mode, you'll each pick two ships with one captain each. Without going through all your stats, notice that the ships are affected by the wind. Most handle best with it at their back, whereas Sloops and Zebex handle best with the wind in their face. Each player chooses a color and takes all those dice. Place five dice on each ship set to the printed starting value, and one on the captain. Same instructions. Shuffle up your faction skill cards and deal yourself three cards to start. Match the ships you picked with their matching mini. Check the name on the card with the list in the book, then find said mini by its anatomy or by the icon on the base. These ships go on the starting tile you placed. If you worry about mixing them up, try the old matching token trick. Finally, let's see who starts things off. Each player rolls a d12. The highest roller... That would be the player who rolls the larger number. Right. What did I say? That player decides whether to go first or second. If they go second, they get to place the wind vane facing whichever way they wish to gain an advantage. The low roller does the opposite. When it's your turn, start by increasing your crew morale by one point, up to its maximum, which is the printed number beneath it. So you shouldn't need to do this on your first turn. Second. Draw back up to three skill cards if necessary. From this point on, you can play the skill cards as appropriate, or even discard so you can draw more cards next time. Now you're ready to go. Your ship may move and or attack in either order. You can move your ship forward the appropriate number of hexes and or rotate your ship in either order. Check the speed chart on your ship's card, determine the wind's direction, and see how many spaces you can traverse. You can go up to that number. So you can stop early if you like, but once you stop, you'll stay in that hex until your next turn. Pivoting is the other part of your movement. You can rotate up to the printed value on the card. You can do this before or after you relocate. The order is up to you. Once you get within cannon's reach of a rascally opponent's ship, it's time to make some noise. To attack with your cannons, pick a target. That means an enemy within range that you have line of sight to. But it also means part of that ship. Each hex has six sides, so that's six potential targets. But really, it just comes down to four parts. The bow, the stern, port, or starboard. Your ship card shows you how well you'll do at certain distances. The pirate ships tend to be more effective up close. Whereas the British hit better from afar. As for line of sight, measure from the center of your attacking ship's hex to any potential target on the enemy. Those hexes with red outlines show you where the obstacles are. Needless to say, you can't shoot through those. You can draw a line with your finger to check, or get yourself a string. But we picked up this target lock laser pointer, and it works like a charm. Now, let's pull the trigger. Once you've targeted part of a ship, check that range chart again to see how many D12s you'll be rolling. But first, see if anyone wants to play any of their skill cards, because this is the only time during the attack you can do so. If you're the attacker, you want cannon accuracy. If you're the target, you want defense. There's some other cool cards, too. Just read what they do. If you want to throw one into the fight, pay its cost from the morale of the captain in the battle. However, that number can never drop below one. So, for instance, 
Six morale is really only five spendable points. The number you wish to hit with each die is the value of that ship part, plus the defense bonus printed next to it. So roll the dice and have a look. If you manage to roll a one, that's an instant fail for that die. For each of the others, add the accuracy bonus from the range chart, as well as bonuses from your captain card or any played skill cards. For each die equal or greater to that target, deal one damage to the location. If the die is reduced below one, remove it and any remaining damage hits the middle structure. You've got to watch out for that die. It's the plug that sinks your boat. And by the way, when you attack this area in the future, the printed bonus of that part is still in effect, but the damage goes straight to the center. If you fail to hit the target with any of your dice, nothing happens really. Everyone just points and laughs at you. <laughs> <laughs> Another way to attack a bad guy is by boarding. Each ship has the option to attack via boarding or cannons, but not both. Here's what you do. First, you've got to be in close for this one. So if you're adjacent to a ship, Declare your intentions, and both players get that one chance to play skill cards. After that, both attacker and defender each roll 1d12. Add your number to your captain's current morale, as well as any cards played, and the printed value for grapple or repel. Naturally, grapple is the attack, whereas repel is the defense. Whoever rolled the lowest, as well as anyone who rolled a one, take one point of structural damage and reduce that captain's morale to one. The crew's not keen on failure, matey. But if you roll the highest number, fill that captain's morale up to its max. Happy crew. Victory depends largely on the players involved. The game is intended to be a changeable, open world, sandbox type experience, utilizing its combat system as its base. So you can say to first ship sunk, or last ship standing. There's a second mode in the book called Merchant Escort, where two players will each escort a third ship from one end of the board to the other. And that ship becomes the condition for success or failure. In fact, it doesn't end there. There's a whole book of missions out there. Isn't there? Indeed. This should keep you busy for a while. Well, here's the big question. How does it play? We've heard this game described as a beer and pretzels game. But if you're new to war games, you'll most likely need some caffeine with those pretzels instead. It's a solid combat system, but there are a lot of numbers on the table, making newcomers go cross-eyed. So it's hard to imagine the average gamer thinking of this as a casual game, especially when you control and confront two or three ships each. In fact, in this case, we recommend scooting the captain cards down to indicate which ships have acted already, since turns on occasion can last a while and things can get pretty confusing. We find that tokens help. Placing an attack marker on your ship before a cannon attack and another on the target location helps keep things straight as you work out the other details. We also use the ones reminding you which ship is which. We usually say things like, my green ship is attacking your blue ship. Hopefully we'll get better at identifying them at a glance. It's also helpful to leave a marker behind when moving your ship we found ourselves changing our minds a lot because of something we initially overlooked. And it's easy to forget where you started. That wind vane gets in our way a lot, so a simple arrow and a hex keeps you from bumping your poor flute. Also, that laser device we mentioned is helpful for checking the wind's effect on your ship. Since the directions aren't labeled in the game, visual aids can save the day for some players. A lot of people already get port and starboard confused, so it's good to keep reminding yourself that when facing forward, left is port and right is starboard. With a bit of practice, you'll find yourself getting better at keeping the details straight, so stick with it. And use any extra bits you need to get through the process. Now for the parts and pieces. The minis are sturdy, they look nice, and don't tend to fall over. Plus, I've seen some slick looking painted ones. But that wind vane! If you don't replace it with something smaller, or try to avoid it altogether, not likely. Try raising it a bit. We gave this a shot, but it just made it easier to knock over, so I can't really recommend this method. The boards in our copy don't lie flat, which can be mildly annoying, but hasn't caused us any real problems yet. We'll probably just put ours under something heavy and wait. You'll also find some issues with the early rulebook. The updated one from the Geek has streamlined some things and removed some confusing sections, but you'll still have to weather the occasional typo. Nothing game-breaking. And Captains Apollo and Redney have been great about answering questions. Now here's the good stuff. 
you'll start in annihilation mode, which is just kill, 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 with no mission. But after a game or two, you'll be ready to start adding additional conditions and objectives. Blasting the barnacles out of each other is all good fun, especially when you get the hang of this combat system. But the game becomes a story when you must escort, protect, or race other ships. And there are lots of stats on the captains and places on the board, which indicates many more possible adventures in the future. The mission book has 15 missions in it, and there are some add-ons for the game to add further depth, as well as the recent Volume 2. And I believe the forthcoming Volume 3, which will add new factions with new tactical approaches. As we were learning this game, I found myself looking ahead to the mission book to see all the options we would have. And honestly, dice-centric games aren't typically my favorite, but I really enjoyed this one and will definitely play it again soon. Aye, this is a great one for your library. And now that we've got a hook in it, we may be hooked. And with that, we're off to join the festivities. Be sure to join our founding followers for more of our shenanigans on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs> and be sure to visit our Patreon, where the inner circle gets behind the scenes stuff and advanced sneak peeks. And they even get to weigh in on how things work around here because that's democracy, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and happy 4th of July to all of our American pirates. Right. Let's make it a great day of gaming. Party responsibly all. Here's to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> <laughs>